Arr, you scurvy dogs! Hi everyone, my name is Bagheera and welcome to episode 9 of Cub Scout TV. Tonight is all about pirates. Uh, for parents that are out there, could you please ensure your kids have got, if they have, a walnut, some blue tack, a toothpick and some paper. We're going to be making a walnut boat. Uh, some paper, crayons, pens, markers, um, and a damp tea bag, and we'll be making a pirate, uh, sorry, a treasure map. Um, and we're doing sheet pens, so if I've got some rope, um, that would be great. <clears throat> so whilst your mum and dad are going off and getting that, let's get into parade. So, uh, Cubs at alert, Cubs at ease. Pack, pack, pack. Do your best. Excellent. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Let's start off with a game. So tonight's game is going to be ship shore. So if I say you, you need to follow the instructions. If I say ship, run that way. If I say shore, run that way. Make sure I don't run into anything. And there's some other actions. So captain coming on board. Um, there is uh, man the rigging. Um, Octopus, if, it's, if I yell octopus, you need to line your back with your arms and legs uh, in the air. Um, at ease. So let's get started. So remember, whatever I yell, you need to do. So, sure. Ship. Captain coming on board. Man the rigging. Octopus. Captain coming on board. Sure. Ship. Ship. <laughs> Don't trick you there. Captain coming on board. Octopus. Shore. Ship. Octopus. Captain coming on board. Man the rigging. Octopus. Shore. Ship. Captain coming on board. Excellent. Okay, well done, guys. Um, now, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be making these cool little walnut boats. So, for this, you'll need uh, a toothpick, some paper, some blue tack to, to stick your uh, the mast in with, and uh, a walnut. So, let's go down to the table and see how we make these. So, to, to start off with, You'll need a walnut, or ideally half a walnut. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a trick to this. I haven't mastered this bit yet <clears throat> in terms of uh, cracking the walnut without smashing the shell completely. Let's see how I've gone with this smaller one. Ooh, not too bad. <clears throat> so you might need your parents to help you uh, take out the, or halve the, the walnut. So take take everything out of the out of the walnut. Obviously, you can eat the walnut itself whilst you're uh, making the little boat. So that becomes the hull of your boat. Next thing you'll need is some blue tack. So we just need enough blue tack to sit in the bottom of your boat. Uh, next you'll need a toothpick. Now, I didn't have a toothpick, so I grabbed a, uh, a skewer and I've simply chopped part of that off. So, um, you don't need to chop all the way through your skewer. You can just chop a little bit with some scissors and make a little mark in there and then when you bend, bend that will work. And so that... <coughs> becomes your mast, and so then you can just push that into there. And then you need a sail, so um, you, know, you can either use a leaf or a piece of paper, so um, you can have different shaped sails. So just any piece of scrap paper that you, um, that you have. And then you just need a, a hole in the bottom And a hole in the top. 
if you wanted to, you could. Uh, if this is going to be a pirate ship, you could put a a skull. And uh, skull and crossbones <coughs> design onto your uh, onto your sail. Then we just need to thread the sail onto on your boat. So there we have it. <coughs> and these actually work quite well in in water. I didn't. Um, I don't have any water to float this onto. But uh, you know, if it's been raining, if it's, it's going to be raining down here in Melbourne on the weekend, um, so you can make your little. Uh, walnut sailboat and you can make some to your brothers and sisters and then you can race them down the gutters if it's raining on the street you can put that into the gutter and away they'll go they'll race down the street and you can see who uh, which which boat um, makes it uh, down to the end of the street first although don't go too far with it and um, so just very quickly again just to see where you're up to you might have only just managed to get your walnut in half so once you've got your walnut oops, in half, just take out the, the inside, the actual nut. You can eat that. You're probably sitting there eating at the moment. So as I said, that's the hull. A little bit of blue tack left here. <coughs> so you just need enough blue tack to hold that... Uh, Hold the mast in place. I might actually hold this with the point up. So there you go, you've got your mast. And then, as I said, like any shape piece of paper, you can do a little triangle one with this one. You can put a cool design on it if you'd like. Or you can just do a plane. And this one, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna put it straight onto. Right on like that, and there we go. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. Like if you if you want to spend the time putting a nice little uh, pirate um, design onto your uh, onto your boat. Um, when we were making the shields, you could you could put your shield onto your uh, onto your sail. Um, but that uh, very simple, really easy to make. Um, and then you can have lots of fun when you've got some uh, when the rain's about, and you can, as I said, race those down, um, around down the gutters or in a river. Okay, now next one we're going to stand up. We're going to do a uh, do a song. <clears throat> now I know this song isn't very piratey, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it's called uh, the Moose Juice Song. So everyone's standing up, ready to sing. And we're going to have actually got the song um, that we can sing along to. So I will try and sing in, in um, uh, along with the song, and then you repeat after me. So uh, if we're ready to go. There was a great big moose, great big moose who liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose who liked to drink a lot of juice. Sing oh 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 oh. Like to drink the bed. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink the bed. Sing it, oh, oh, oh. We oh, 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 Now there's a 
sticky moose full of juice on the loose. Singing, whoa, oh, 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 oh. We oh, we oh, we oh, we oh. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice and The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice and Singing, oh, oh, oh. We oh, 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 we well done guys, hopefully you enjoyed that song. I quite like that one. <clears throat> uh, next we're going to learn how to do a sheet bend knot. So you can grab your rope. I've got mine here, nicely tied up as we learnt last week. Now a sheet bend knot is a great knot uh, that sailors use. It's really helpful to tie two pieces of rope together that are of unequal size diameter. Um, if you've only got one piece of rope, this is perfectly fine because we can treat one end as one piece of rope and obviously the other end as another piece of rope. Uh, so with this knot, the first thing we need to do is just put a, a, a loop in one end <clears throat> and then we're going to tie the other end to this loop. So we go up through the middle of the loop around the back. We just need to keep this little bit open so we can thread it back through. And then we close it off. And that, very simply, is a sheet bend knot. So, I'll go down to the table and show you that in a close-up so you can have a, a go at it. Of course, the great thing about the sheet bend knot is again, like most of our knots, it's very easy to undo. Jeez, it's a lot of mess on here, Bagheera. Clear away those walnuts. <clears throat> okay, so one end of your rope, or if you've got two pieces of rope, even better, we just form a loop, like so. And then we want to attach this piece to it. <clears throat> so we come up through the loop, around the back, and we want to come through the, a loop that we formed there. And then when it ties together, it doesn't slip and we'll joined our two pieces of rope together. So that is the sheet bend knot. And as we said, very easy to undo. Nice and strong, easy to undo. So let's do that once more. <clears throat> Not sure if there's a great story that goes with it like we had for uh, some of our other knots. So we create our loop with our other end and we go up through the back of the loop. It's almost like the rabbit that came out of the uh, out of, the, <clears throat> out of the, uh, the rabbit hole looking for some food. Uh, it goes around the back of the but doesn't go back down the rabbit hole, it comes through that loop. 
and that is your sheet bend. And so practice that one. Um, for your Cub Scouts out there, you should know how to tie the reef knot, uh, I think the clove hitch possibly, the sheet bend. Um, so, but these will be all on your, your tasks to learn to do. So we've shown you all of the, I think we've shown you all the specific knots that you'd need to, to tick off um, in your Cub Scout guidebook. Um, and just, I'll show you again from what we did in terms of care of rope. So just to, instead of just leaving a, a rope lying around, let's tie it back up properly. So remember we, we loop, loop our rope around our hand, or if we've got lots of it, we can make bigger loops. Hopefully you've been practicing this one and you remember from last week. So we've <clears throat> got a little bit of rope left over. We can squeeze our rope together in the middle. <clears throat> Start tying the rope around. Make sure we've got enough left over because remember what we do, we form a, we poke that through and form a, a loop through that goes up and over. And then that can pull down tightly. And that's how we should always be leaving our rope uh, once we've finished using it. So remember to practice your sheet bend and make sure you've, you've kept, um, <clears throat> kept your, your rope nice and uh, neat and tidy. Um, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put together a great little treasure map. So what we'll need here is uh, some paper, some markers, and a damp tea cloth. So uh, I'll bring this down to the table so we can look at, at this one in a little bit more detail. But to get that sort of old and used look, we get a, a tea bag. And you can see with this tea bag that I've had seeping in, in water, some of the, the, the colour, and that's, that's how we get the, the, the brown onto the paper. <clears throat> so, um, let's, uh, let's put that to one side. So you need, obviously you need a piece of paper to start off with. Um, now the, to start off with, get, you know, I'm gonna choose a, a, a red marker, and I'm gonna put a, a, an X, well this is a pink marker, an X marks the spot, as to where the treasure is. And then I'm going to create a little path that the person that finds my treasure map can follow. To the starting point. And so you can put a couple of arrows onto the, uh, onto your map. So X, remember X is going to mark the spot where they will find the treasure. Now this could be a, a real map um, that you could use with your friends and you might have something they could actually find, say in your backyard, or it could be an absolutely imaginary um, map. So along the way, um, we can draw all sorts of interesting things. So in the one that, uh, the one that I did, um, we had some trees, so quite easy to draw a tree on your treasure map. I'm going to obviously use some, some brown uh, marker for the trunk of the tree and some green for the, for the leaves. Now remember, pirates aren't the best artists. So no one's expecting your treasure map to, to look like a Picasso. Uh, so it can be quite rough. And really we don't necessarily want everyone finding our treasure. It's more so for the, for the pirates to, to, um, to find their own treasure. Um, now I might have a, uh, there might be a river or something to cross. So we can draw a, let's draw a river flowing through maybe to a, you know, maybe there's a pond with a, 
with a river. Might draw a little duck sitting on the. Uh, it's probably a bit hard to see in this. I'm sorry, guys, but trust me, that's a beautiful looking duck that I've drawn that's sitting on the <laughs> sitting on the the lake there. A few little waves on the river. I might draw a little. Might draw a uh, a bridge that you need to go across to get across the the river. Um, we could have a hill, so I might draw a hill over here. Again, I'll draw a uh, draw some sort of hill with some grass, and on the top of that, I'll I'll draw a uh, draw a castle. So I'll draw a, a turret on the side with a flag coming off it. Um, a little arch there with another turret. Some windows. In the middle, I'm going to draw another turret. A big one. There's a giant one in the middle, running out of space there. Draw a drawbridge. You could draw a dragon, you could draw all sorts of things. Use your imagination to make the, the map come alive and put as much detail as you'd, uh, as you'd, you'd like onto your, uh, onto your map. Um, so your starting point, starting point might be a house or a, um, it could be a tree. I might draw a, might draw a very, very basic looking <laughs> house. As my uh, as my starting starting point. Um, so yeah, so you can draw other houses or buildings, rivers. Um, you know, you can put a sea serpent in some ships. You can put a castle in um, any other landmark. So if it is if it was a real map going from say your house down to your school or something, then you can put all sorts of different bits and pieces. Bits and pieces into into the map. Now, <clears throat> once you've you've got your map, it's not looking like it's looking like a brand new map, not an old dirty map like I've got. So, the next thing to do is so you can if you just stop drawing now, guys, and um, you can fix up some of the, the your map later. And we just carefully rip, or well, not that carefully. You just don't want to rip off some of your your great work. A nicely ripped up map. I'm going to rip off half my castle there. Shouldn't have put it so close to the side. That's okay. As I said, it's a it's a treasure map. Okay, so now we've got a much rougher looking map. <clears throat> the um, one thing that we need to put on our maps, I forgot to do of course, was uh, put in where north, south, east and west is so you can um, orientate yourself. So um, you know, it could be in this map, you know, we like to put north at the, the top of the map. Never eat soggy wheat bix. Okay, so now to make it look older, that's where our, our damp tea bag comes in. So I don't want too much water on here, but we can now use the tea bag and That will give us a very dirty looking, dirty looking map. And 
it smells a lot like tea in here now. <clears throat> now this is quite damp now, so what you need to do, be very careful with it, is let that dry. So if you've got um, you know, somewhere safe, uh, a distance away from the heater, put it in front of the heater or, or a, a, a heating duct, and just let that dry. <clears throat> Once it's dry, and what I've done again with, with this one, is very simply, scrunched it up. So scrunch it up, then you can unfold it, It's starting to look like a really good treasure treasure map. <clears throat> uh, you can also brush um, brush some oil over both sides, um, and then when that dries out, so make sure it's dry before you put the oil on it. Just a little bit of cooking oil from the kitchen, um, and then when that dries, it becomes crunchier. That actually uh, becomes really really great. But there you have. Your very own treasure map. So after the show, um, you can if you haven't finished your map or if you didn't get the tea bag, put your tea onto that, dry it up, scrunch it up, um, put some oil on it, and finish it up. And don't forget to send in some some pictures of of that. Uh, so I'm not sure if I said at the start of the show, but this is our final episode of Cub Scouts TV. Um, next term, we'll be going back into the hall. I'd like to say a great big thanks to CJ for all of the work that he has done behind the scenes with all the lighting, the camera work, um, putting everything together. He spent a lot of time um, doing that. So thanks, CJ. I'm sure everyone that's watching would love to, to thank you um, for your efforts. Thank you to everyone that has watched. Thank you for sending in your pictures. Thanks for spending your time um, following along the activities. I hope that you've enjoyed it. All of the episodes are on our website, uh, scoutstv.com.au. So you can always go back to that website. That website's going to be there for a lot longer. All the resources that we've um, used, activities, you can go back and find those. If you've got friends at school, that don't know anything about Scouts, send them to the website so they can have a look um, and invite them along when the halls do open back up. Invite your friends to come and try out Scouting and see what it's all about and uh, get them to enjoy um, enjoy the fun of, uh, of Scouting. So thank you everyone. Um, it's been great. It's been really enjoyable being up here in front of the camera um, putting together these programs. Um, but I am looking forward to having a bit of a break and uh, and getting back into the hall next term. Uh, so let's do our closing parade. So everyone stand up. Uh, uh, everyone on alert. Uh, at ease. Um, and finally, um, good hunting and stay safe. Thanks very much.